Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Um, Two-man ship this week. Ryan is not with us, but I am here with Jose. How are you doing this week, Mr. Jose? Very good. Thank you, Lee. Very good. Glad to be back after the little uh, that people wouldn't know about the break. But, um, well, but we talked about but it, I... but if pe- people are going through the archive, it will be seamless. But yes, we, we bulk Ooh. recorded. So it's actually been, what, three weeks since we caught up face to face. Yeah, and something special's happened over those three weeks, hasn't it, Lee? Oh, what did you get up to? Not me, not me. <laughs> Correct. I think you need to share with I the nation. Now, I am now a married man, and I was not last time we recorded. Yeah, wonderful, yeah. And uh, off air, Lee was telling me how wonderful it was. But yeah, how, how are you feeling right now all about it, all, all of it? Just give us, give, us, give, give the right. nation a little bit of a... I'm feeling fantastic. The only thing is I am still suffering slightly of a little bit of jet lag and stay up far too late and then struggle to get up in the morning. But I'm sure by this time next week, that will have all sorted itself out. That is the commitment that is Lee. That is his <laughs> jet lag. He's still here. He's still here. Oh, we've got a congr- congratulations from Hayda. Thank you. On, appreciate that. On, on, on the TikTok. Thank I appreciate you. Oh, that, Hayda. Fabulous. Thank you very much. You're amazing. It's really good. That's great. Look at that. Brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I can let you carry on, Lee, but I, I really love the fact that you're, you're now a married man, um, joining the club. We've only got uh, Ryan now to, to, to be yeah, married. Yeah, we'll get on that we're... with him, won't we? Get in on him when he eventually turns up for the podcast. We can sort him out. <laughs> He'll hear that as well, by the way. <laughs> He'll hear that. That's why I said it. That is why I said it. <laughs> of course, we love you, Ryan. Right. Of course we do. We love you so much. Go I on. believe, Jose, that I am the man with the talking stick this week. Is that right? You certainly are. And I'd see it a few weeks ago, maybe last week. I don't know where we got to in our bulk. This is the trouble. When you record like four episodes in two weeks, it all gets a bit blurry. But I teased you with a number of topics. Um, and I've started doing this. I've started because I... Random as where you can, I start to have an idea that pops in my head. I'm oh, that would be a good podcast, and then I start to flesh it out a bit in my mind. And by the time the podcast starts, I've completely forgotten it. So I've started writing them in the notes on my phone. So I'll give you a choice. I'll give you a choice, Jose. I know which one you're going to go for. You've been king, but you've... yeah, you've done this. You do keep giving me choices. I don't know if I like this. I, I feel a bit uncomfortable because it's like I like it. Well, I'm just going to do this, but now go on, like, go on. You got the three C's. Yeah, which is what I teach you a few weeks ago. Or you've got, my title is, The Safety of Where We Sleep. Oh, I like both of these already. I'm going to go for three Cs because I, I had the choice to start with the other one last time. So I'm going three Cs on this one. But cool. I really like the sound of the other one too. We'll have to wait for that. That'll be in a little while. That'll be in a little while. The three Cs, the concept of this is three things that me right now, as a soon-to-be 41-year-old man, this Friday, by the way, Jose, just in case you need to Happy know birthday that. in advance of Friday. I'll make sure I send you a message. In fact, that'll be the day this goes out on the audio feed for everybody. So today is my birthday, we can say. I like that. But as I think a 40-year-old man, these are three things that I wish I could take and give to my younger self when I was, say, 20. Let's say 21 to make it kind of round of what we're doing. Three Cs. Number one, confidence. And I think this, yep. you know, I if you'd have asked me if I was confident about myself when I was 20, 21, I'd have probably said yes. I'd have probably half meant it, but I definitely would remember a feeling when I was younger, looking at people sometimes who were older, who were finding confidence and thinking that I was quite confident myself. And I can look back now and know that I, I didn't have the self-assurance that I do have now in myself. And I think confidence... And it's, it's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. And what I'm not talking about is just foolhardy self-belief or believing I'm the best or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but an inner belief in myself. And I wish I had the, the amount I have of that. I, I was careful to start using so many other Cs there. How I feel about that in myself and my willingness to put myself out there or try things or believe in my ability to deliver, I wish I could take the amount of that I've got now and like pour that into myself when I was 20 because not having that, I think, holds you back from you know taking chances, putting yourself out there, etc., etc. I dare say in another 20 years' time, I'll probably be saying, God, the amount I've got now, I wish I could have given them to myself when I was 40. But I definitely think it takes time to build it, I think. There's no way around it. You, you it, it comes through experience, and I don't know how you expedite it, but I wish I could push that back on myself. The second of these three Cs that I wish I could impart down the line to myself and it ties onto it, is comfort. So linked with the confidence is the comfort in myself and who I am as a person and where I fit in and how people see me, how I see other people, etc., etc. Just being comfortable with myself, what I want to do, what I like to do, 
that my ambitions and my goals and what I see as success might not be what someone else sees and that's absolutely fine and just being comfortable being me and being happy doing the things I want to do and striving for do them and so these these overlap with each other it fits with the confidence but definitely that you know the comfort in me being me rather than and I talked about some previous podcasts but definitely a view of a need to fit in and uh, you know there's a way to be and I need to be like that because everyone else is like that and realizing that's not the case and actually just you know without saying comfortable being me comfortable being me again I'll take a pause for a second because I've rattled through two and I've not even asked you for your input Joe so confidence number one and from your perspective you as a 74 year old man as you are now looking back down the line how do you feel your confidence is now compared to where you were younger and would it maybe have helped or hindered if you felt differently when you were younger so thanks lee for 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 my age telling my real age out there really Scott, appreciate that for starters. this is this lays into number two you have to be comfortable with this joe put it out yeah there. i am very comfortable thank you lee for that um so confidence yeah it's a strange one that isn't it because i do feel much more confident now even when it wasn't long ago that I didn't feel that confident. You, you know, I'm talking about when we were working together the last time, yes. I wasn't very confident at all. I had strong, strong purpose, but not much confidence to deliver that purpose. And it took a lot of time to, to build that. I would say to you, my confidence depends on the area where I am, but I'm much more confident now, like you say, than I was when I was younger. And when I was younger, it was about the people that I surrounded myself with. And I explained this before about the friends that I had friends impacted that confidence and actually drained that confidence. And this is why it's a really important message that when you're younger, um, Ryan's age or younger, is that you surround yourself with people that are going to help you be confident. And you need to distance yourself from people that aren't bring, aren't helping you become confident or undermining your confidence. My perspective on this is that, yes, I'm much more confident now. I'm older and it does take time it takes time but i think there's also another side to this where just because you're older doesn't necessarily mean you're confident because i come across older people that aren't confident there were areas where my my mum bless her was not confident depending on what the area was there are other areas where she was very confident even my dad there's conf areas that they're confident in and areas they're not but i definitely think as a general rule that that confidence does come out you're more I think as you get older, you're more, oh, yeah, this is this is what I found as my personal experience, the personal perspective and what I've been observing. You're more likely to speak your mind, I think, without so many filters. That's what I found. Um, and I've noticed it in, you know, because I converse with older generations like myself, like you said, Lee, right? So, but is I have that noticed that. when you're that. sitting around in the nursing home waiting for like the pills yeah. and stuff to come around, yeah. That, that's right, yeah. That you know, waiting for your tour out, you know, waiting getting on the bus and waiting for your, <laughs> you know, your, your tea out and everything, right? But I have noticed that. Um, but what I'm mindful of is that, you know, again, with the confidence thing is that although I can speak my mind, I am very conscious that you know, I have to do it in a way which which is, is non-judgmental and that helps the situation rather than hinders it. So, it is, like you say, a real fine line between confidence and arrogance, and it's really important that we don't step over that line. Yeah. So that, for me, is is the confidence part of me. Yes, I feel more confident, but I've got to keep and make sure there's a check on it that it doesn't slip over into arrogance. Or I could become too unconfident. Like I think you and Ryan talked about before, the pendulum swings. You know, you, yes. you, you yes. enter... You're into an area sometimes. Oh, I don't feel confident at all. How do I boost it? Oh, I'm really confident here. How do I sort of bring it back a little bit? That doesn't, you know, sort and of not... settle into the middle. Yeah. So it's so it's so your you're always constantly, I think, measuring it internally. But no, you're right. As generally, if you're going to ask me, yes, I feel more confident now than I did when I was younger. If that answers your question. It does. It does. I just wanted your views. And I, like you said, there's different areas where you are on. I say overall with myself, I am. But then, there, you know, mm. if you put me into a completely alien situation, that's different. So it will be situational depending what's mm. what's going on. But I think overall, that's a lot more now. Second, the comfort is the second. I think it overlaps. You know, you said... You had friends who would knock down your confidence. You're obviously, as well as being more confident, you're a lot more comfortable in yourself, what you want to do, who you want to be. You know, we talked a few weeks ago about the whole Joe to Jose thing and, you know, that comfort in your heritage and who you want to be and how you want to be identified. So same thing, I suppose. Looking back, are you more comfortable in yourself, less comfortable in yourself? Do you think you could have benefited from being more comfortable in your own skin in your younger days? 
Do you know what? Yes. Uh, I think when you're younger, again, I, I told you before, and it's like I didn't want to stand out. Like, yes. I was quite good at certain things, but I would hide that because I didn't want to stand out, right? Because once you stand out, you become a target, right? So, and that kind of leads with confidence, to be fair. You know, if, if you're confident, then you don't mind being the target because you can handle it, right? So, now I don't mind it where I'm the target because we've had it, don't we, on the podcast, right? <laughs> I, own, I only feedback. ever speak the truth, Joe. Oh, your external I, feedback. Is this the, uh, the poo content comment? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that we've had people in our lives, didn't we? Giving us a bit of hassle, a bit of grief. Yes. But had that happened when I was younger, I would have really, I probably destroyed me like, if that had happened. But now, because, like you said, Lee, more comfortable with what I represent in myself. And like you said, like, I'm more, I, before I would not want to hide my, my heritage because in those days, back with the days that I'm talking about, like you're talking about the 70s and 80s, we weren't so well. We what, there was not so much cultural diversity awareness, or you know, it was a bit more. You would feel on the edge if you had something a bit different, right? But now I think you know, looking back, I should have really owned it. But you, you just haven't got the confidence. It links the comfort, links the confidence. I think. So now I'm much more co confident about my comfort, where I sit. I know what I'm here to do. I know what I'm here on this planet to do, and that for me has been a massive comfort. And I've been able to speak my truth in front of many, many people. Again, that comes with confidence because of you, where you truly are. And that's the, the, the work I talked to you about when, we, when I was talking about, the, you know, the M. Carmichael book of your one word and built to serve. I now know where I am most, what I represent and what my job here on this planet is to do. I'm really aware of it now, but it took a lot of work to get there because I had to go through mental health, like we talked about in the podcast. I had to go through very challenging times, but did the work, and and that was the missing. It was my miss my purpose was missing, and now I have that purpose, and now I'm I'm quite happy. If someone says to me, "What are you passionate about?" Coaching. That's it. Love it. You know, and I will tell people about it without actually going, "Oh, oh," you know, not trying to hide it. So I'm just going to say, and if people don't like it, that's okay. Um, before I would probably have gone, okay. I'm not sure whether you like it or not. I really do care about whether you like it or not. And I don't want you not to care because I like to be liked and none of that comes into play anymore. I still like to be liked, but I'm more accepting of the fact that not everyone's going to like it, but that's okay. And that's the comfort and I'm very happy. And this is why we do this podcast, right? Because the podcast is about coaching. It's about personal development. It's about stretching. And you have to face those things to stretch. And I've definitely found since doing the podcast that I'm definitely much more comfortable. Every time we do an episode, I feel that increases. And it's just what I'm meant to be doing. And this is just feels right. I think it, it's right. It feels right. And yeah. And as you say, if anyone asks me now in my place of work, and even when I was working with you, Lee, if anyone said, well, what's Jose about? Well, it's coaching, isn't it? That's what it's about. And that's what I've always, that's, I think from a young age, I've always wanted to help people. Through my leadership days, I've always wanted to help people. And that was the common thread, the common denominator. Even we worked together and we called it a coaching team. It wasn't even a coaching team, more a training team. But even then, it was coming out in weird ways that I didn't understand until now. Like Steve Jobs says, connect the dots backwards. If I look back now, oh, it makes total sense that I want to help people. And this is a coaching is a skill which really does accelerate people. And that's the why I love it so much, because it has that power. And so, yeah. I hope that have I have I, have I explained that was where I, I hope That's, this explained it. It was really good. In fact, you remind me of Sank as well. My own bit with, with the comfort bit is saying about the podcast. You'll probably remember early on, I was quite incognito about doing this with you. I didn't really tell people about it because I thought they might be, and not not because of the content, more from the well, why are you doing that? No one's going to listen to you. Blah blah blah. But all all that sort, you know, the stuff you get hit with whenever you try anything outside the box. And for quite a while, there was that. Oh, sh 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 aspect to what we're doing whereas now I, the second I get in to talk to someone about it I'm like right, right, right. in fact I was out with some family earlier in the week and I was talking to my cousin about it and we were going through and I showed him the YouTube page and the downloads and asking loads of questions about it and it's now kind of the the other end of the spectrum as you like because again I'm more comfortable with no this I'm doing this because I like doing this and you know people are skeptical as they are with all sorts of things in life and I just hit that head on and that's definitely part of that comfort zone in you know this is what i do this is part of my makeup yeah and i'm with you it on that maybe pop that back start. in my head there yeah when you first started i mean i actually had to make a conscious effort so we're doing a podcast like that i was still finding a little bit uncomfortable but I'd, I'd be much i'd be 
before I, you know, if I'd gone back to my younger days, I would have been really like, oh, you know, I can't tell. But I still talk about it because it's something that um, I still felt a bit uncomfortable when we started it because it's like really new, isn't it? You think, oh, what are people going to think? But I forced myself to go, no, it's what I do a podcast. And, um, but no, I, I get what you mean totally. So I totally agree with you. And, uh, and that bit for me, that rose up a bit for me as well, not to say they didn't because it did. And again, it's part of the growth. And I think it's what gives us this. Absolutely. And, and I've got a number of people who just listen to a little bit of one off the back of a conversation and almost always they come back with at least one question. Oh, what do you think about this? Or it's interesting you do this. Or I thought about that for it all. You know, it's it's a really good conversation. You just have to get people through the door to have a, a bit of a listen to it. I totally agree. I totally agree. Lee. Number three, then, Joe, would you mm. like to take a guess at the third C? Oh, God, I don't know what it might be. Confidence, comfort. I've got no idea, Lee. It's the I one that honest. ties all of these together. Oh, um, really? Character? Courage. Oh, like that. Mm. And I think we, yeah, previous, this is my, my you know, I just use my crutch here. I use that a lot when I listen back to myself. I'll be like, oh, you know, you don't know. You don't know what I'm saying. It's just my little filler in the middle of the conversation. So, you know, we've talked about this in loads of previous podcasts before, but it is that comfort in taking a risk, having an idea and putting yourself forward and knowing it might not work and knowing it could work, but being prepared to take that chance. And I say put sank on the line, more often than not, what you put on the line is just your own pride that something doesn't work and you've invested a bit of time in it or you've put something publicly out there and it's not seen. And you know, sometimes it is money, sometimes it is other things, but a lot of the time the, the risk is that personal inside, this might fail risk. And again, I just think, of, of all the three and they're, they're intrinsically linked i don't think i think they all support each other like in the circle but of all the three this is the one i really could wish i could push back and have had a bit more conviction to push ahead with ideas or try things or take risks or go and talk to people or whatever that thing is i told my my well-worn story of not going out of a band after a gig once and always regretting not doing that but i think it all comes back to that that preparedness just to put yourself out there and again I think it comes with experience and it comes with time and some people get early on some people get it later it always builds but it's another one of those things I wish I could just distill and pass back down the line and have when I was younger well you've got to put opportunity to that to do that with the next generation haven't you yes like yeah. so this is the beauty of it isn't it it's the beauty of it and it's doing it in the way which like encourages it. yeah of course so Lee, yeah, so courage, I totally agree. I think it's something that you do build over time and it's something that you do have to take risks. We took risks with the podcast that people have laughed and Tony Robbins talks about, you know, when you take do something new, people start laughing at you, but then they'll accept it. And then as soon as it succeeds, they'll say, pat you on the pat you on the back. So there's three elements to this. One, they'll laugh at you when you start to launch it two as i say there's there's an element of acceptance oh they're doing it and then three once you start to crush it once it starts to take off then people start to congratulate oh i knew it would work but it's no guarantee even now there's no guarantee that this, this will work so it's really important that when you believe something you take that leap and again Simon's good talks about it all the time luck is a skill but he talks about luck being a skill because you take risks so that's where courage is needed to take that first step and it's always the first step which is the hardest step where you put yourself on the line you put everything on the line and you go okay well what's the worst that can happen well people don't listen well that's fine people don't watch the videos that's fine well at least one person does then that's a, that's a win right and we did set our, we did set that as the that bar was the goal right? wasn't it just one person yeah and we've had multiple downloads loads of views things have taken off you get um, recognised by a stranger in public. Yeah, yeah, and so courage is needed. And as you said, if you could give it to your younger self, it would be great. And I think that's why coaching is so powerful. I was even having a session today where I was doing an action learning set with leaders, and you would not believe, you know, the things that hold people back still, things like perfectionism, you know, things like that, and having the courage to step to acknowledge your own things that hold you back and then step through them. That's what coaching does. It, it helps you develop a plan to step through in that cut through, through the, through the fear into the courage, right? So Susan Jeffers, feel the fear and do it. Anyway, it's a great book. So that speaks to this particular C as well. 
you know feel the fear and do it anyway that's what's important because you're always going to have an element of fear there's still, there are things that are going to go wrong but if you are committed to it then you've got the best chance there's no guarantee of success of course there's not but if you persist long enough you've got a greater chance of it succeeding so um not simon Scrib, but simon sinek talks about if you want to build something it will take time there's a lot of pushing that goes on but once it gets to some sort of swing point i don't want to call it swing point or something it will start to create its own momentum and that's what we're aiming for we keep pushing we keep pushing and we want people, more people to listen to get impacted by this so we can continue but we are courageous we are doing this irrespective of what happens even if lee's coming back from his wedding honeymoon <laughs> and saying i'm jet lagged he's still doing it he's still doing it and again you know he, lee could just easily have said oh do you know what? i'm just too tired i'm not going to do this and to blow it off but no he's going to step in there and step through that uncomfortableness and tiredness and doing it and that's what it takes if you want something to be great you have to be able to push through those fears and struggles because that's what creates you that create that creates you that provides character if you can push through your if you can acknowledge what those excuses are and know that they are holding you back but you acknowledge them and you push through them one you're going to start defeating your excuses and two is going to build character and you'll be the type of person you're putting a vote and james kid talked best you're putting a vote in the box vote in the box for the person you want to become and that's what it's all about this is what this podcast is all about being inspired and taking inspired action that's what we're doing we're sharing our experiences with you and we, we've been quite crazy ourselves to share it because some of the stuff isn't great right some of the stuff we've done is terrible um in terms of we've just not won or succeeded and um, i remember lee you saying about i remember you saying about a story about when you ran a hotel and you did this services thing i think it was and you just you, you just didn't pursue it had you pursued it you think it would have worked well yes. you already had some leads and there was that I don't know how old you were, but I think you're pretty young. You must have been early twenties. Oh, I think I was probably. I think I was even like nineteen, maybe. Nineteen. That that's what I'm talking about. So that's that courage thing, isn't it? Sorry, Lee. You're going to say something? Was you going to add to that? No, no, no. That's I was just concerned the age, but it was very, very young. Yeah, and that potentially could have been amazing, couldn't it? And but you you didn't step on it because of the whole thing about the courage, the fear, of what people think, to do all the risks and stuff. So, what I would encourage you is not to take. So what this is all about is not about taking silly risks. It's like you know, it's about taking a risk but minimizing all the downsides you can that's what great people do they take a risk and they know there's risk but they try and minimize all the downsides. you can't control everything but you can control what you control so that's what we do that's what you do you go okay what could happen okay what how can i mitigate that right i can't mitigate everything but i can mitigate quite a bit of that right let's just go forward and try this and that's when great companies are born that's when great people accelerate because they are willing to push past their limitations through courage and in fact there was a guy double amputee went up Everest I think the other week I think so inspiring and that's why I love inspiration this is why it's called inspiration nation because I inspired by people who do amazing things and I want to get a bit of that I would have just at least one percent of it like David Goggins you know going through going through a marine and going through hell week three times and one of them with a broken leg like if someone like that can do something like that then there's hope for us all to, to, to do the things that we want to do. There was even, I've got a book book called by Jim Collins called Good to Great. And he reminded me, I was reading it, it reminded me of the story of Viktor Frankl in a concentration camp and saying how he got through. And there's another one, another another sort of very similar story where a similar thing happened that they survived a concentration camp um, by the, the, the sheer fact that they will get through it. They don't know when, but they will get through it. It was all about not saying, oh, I'm going to just survive till Christmas. It was like, no, we just got to persist every day, every day. Just got to keep on it, keep on it. We don't know when we're going to come out, but we just got to keep on it every day and just knowing and having belief that one day this will happen. And I think that for me was really inspiring that if you chase your goals and dreams down, what is a better life? You know, even if it didn't happen, think about this for a moment. A great life is pursuing the things that you love, right? And you're passionate about because that's the life. It's the now. Yes. It's, oh, we're doing this now because we really enjoy and love it. The results, of course we'd love results, but that's not the thing. The thing is the effort. The thing is the doing it. We should be enjoying it, not for the results, but because we enjoy it. And I think that's where the key is. And the book Good to Great talks about a hedgehog concept. And I'll, I'm going to reference that. That's another thing that I want to share with the nation. We're going to add that one to the book. list, are we? Yeah, I'm going to add it. It's really good. And I tell you, this is how companies go from 
good to great. Um, and it's a really powerful concept. Anyway, anyway, I've gone on a bit about courage, but there's a lot of courage at everything, for company, for individuals, for, for young people. This applies to everybody, no matter how old you are, I think we can always have a bit more courage, right? Yeah, I think Lee's checking some messages there. I was, I was just scanning through the TikTok, loads of great people getting involved, lots of likes as well, Joe. It's very, very oh, good. Oh, look at that, 657, it's great. I can't that. multitask, as has been established. Thank you for that. We're also seamless there, Joe. I thank you, but we need to acknowledge it because if you were audio, if you're listening live with us on TikTok, you will not have noticed a thing. If you're watching with us live right now on YouTube, as some are, or if you are watching later on on YouTube, you'll have seen me disappear from the screen for two minutes, but Joe carried us through seamlessly, so thank you for that. You're more than welcome. In the old days, we'd have stopped, we'd have cut that out, we'd have started re-recording. Now we just run with it because we are comfortable. Oh, I love that. It is, isn't it? It's the practice as well, isn't it? it is, this, is, these are, this is like the work we're doing right now, you know, the podcast is getting better and better and better. That's because we're going to the gym. Like it's like lifting the weights, isn't it? You, reps, you know, getting you the stop, reps in. Get the reps in. This is another episode, another rep, right? It's another rep. It's another rep, and each episode we get a little bit stronger. There's one percent, one percent, one percent, one percent, and that's what it's at. Those small incremental shifts, which will shift you. You may not notice it on the daily or the weekly, but you'll notice it definitely in the yearly. So yeah, I love this, Lee. I've really enjoyed this. I think it's another great framework that you can add to the. Uh, toolbox for the nation i love hand it hand in hand confidence comfort courage three things to focus love. on and three things you should have in abundance and find ways to make that happen for you the number three thing seems to be a very constant theme doesn't it because we had the three hobbies now we've got the three c's i don't know some sort of thread running through so i don't know what it is we'll look back in 10 years and we're like, oh do you remember that three all the three <laughs> why is threes. everything a three get more creative yeah. come out of a five yeah. and a two sometime maybe yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely <laughs> right thank you for that joe appreciate the, the feedback on that as well hopefully it's been inspirational for those out there listening my quick bit of shilling at the end because we do appreciate everyone out there in the nation check us out on social media at listen to n listen t-o-i-n i did post earlier that we were going live if you follow us you will find out each and every week when you are and you can you can join us i may have forgotten to actually post a link to the live and then panically panically sent the link about five minutes later but it all works itself out um joe of course just at jose noy inspiration nation stick that name in your google machine he is on every platform there he is he is all over twitter he's all over tiktok i think he's still actually on myspace and bebo and friends reunited and anything else you can think of and as don't well. forget vine vine it's not even a thing anymore is it no it got deleted didn't it yeah <laughs> But he's all over there. You can follow him. Um, check us out as well, inspirationnation.org.uk. Merchandise, coaching service, full archive, and most importantly, you can sign up for Joe's newsletter as if you cannot get enough of him. I think that's it. We're out of time now, Joe. I, actually, I've got one thing to ask. We've got seven minutes left, so we're not going to take seven minutes, but okay. I just wanted to ask you something okay. that we, 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 put, we were doing, and then we sort of stopped. I don't know why. So, Lee, the question is... What's been your biggest takeaway from this conversation? Obviously, it's my topic, so it's hard to say, but on the reflection piece, definitely the, the courage bit. And I so suppose in a way, it's reminding myself of the things I wish I'd have been more courageous with to make sure I am going forward. That will be my takeaway. Nice. For you, Jose? Good. For me, it's to take these three Cs and to continue to apply them even when I'm not feeling confident or comfortable or courageous. And can I, how can I tap into this? Because there will be times when I'm in a situation where I'm not comfortable. Like if say, for instance, something happens in my work or the podcast, I want to hold on to this and go, this is when these three C's are important, when it's difficult and tough. Because it's, it's, when you're feeling confident right now and comfortable, it's okay, we can talk about it, right? But it's when we are challenged. Yes. How can we think of this? So that for me is the big takeaway. It's like holding this true to myself when I feel challenged. And that's the big takeaway for me. How do I maintain continue the momentum? Because life's going to keep me in the balls. I know that. Life's going to come along, going to keep me in the balls again at some point. So how can I use this, you know, when that happens? Like, how do I hold, how do I become like self and consciously aware to be courageous in the time when I'm not feeling courageous or trying to be a bit more confident or when I'm not that confident and actually, what comfort do I need? Just just go into myself like you do, Lee, and go, okay, just be myself in this moment, be honest and true to myself in this moment and not try and be anything other than that. 
those are the things that's that's the real big takeaway for me today really really enjoyed this lee thank you appreciate all that as well very good summing up at the end there as you said appreciate everyone out there we will be back again next week follow us on tiktok or youtube um hit subscribe leave positive reviews all that good stuff we will notify you when we are going live and i think all that's left for me to do is count us down three two one inspiration nation inspiration nation catch you guys catch later you guys later so that's tiktok have an amazing evening <laughs>